But as, as a man, do y'all feel helping around the house is a necessity? Or is it more of the woman's woman's um duties? Todd, we can start with you, bro. With me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I think I think it's definitely some balance, you know. Um to you know to help and like all that different kind of stuff like you know most most women especially today just don't want to be the cooking and cleaning and like literally do all of that stuff literally like everything um non-stop without any kind of help you know uh so yeah I think it is a level of of uh, balance but I also do believe that women who maybe have like a, a wealthy partner mm -hmm um and they're and in and their wealthy partner is in a position to where they're them they themselves as the woman are more so like raising the kids because there is a lot of families like that they don't like to tell you but it really is a lot of families with that dynamic like the same old-fashioned dynamic where the mother doesn't work because the man just makes so much money um i think those women are more susceptible to do like you know the household chores without like really really caring about it because like I feel like them they're more like okay well he's literally putting all the money and some on the table the least I could do is make sure to make sure that my man comes home to a peaceful house a clean house you know whatever that may be and uh and even in them situations like I'm sure the woman doesn't want to just be the only one taking care of the kids you know at the same time like it it's just a balance I feel like it's just a balance and it, and it depends on what kind of thing you got going on in, in your kind of relationship Got you, and that you definitely hit it on the cotton. There's a lot of freaking unfortunate situations that are dealing with that and going through that for sure. It's it's crazy to think about when you actually like yourself. And would you would you say that's more black families or white families, or that's just everything in total? As far as what, like the dynamics you said that's going through that. Say that again. Like like what type of families that you feel are going through that more? Like the woman is like more so taking over everything or, or not so much. Like which ones? Which one? Um I don't know. That's a hard question. I can't really like answer that definitively. Like what race do I think is more susceptible mm -hmm. to what the woman not doing those household things or being or being more, you know, susceptible to doing those household things? Yeah. Like what what you notice more. Like what type of woman is more so like willing to do those things just organically versus the ones of resistance, but even more so the ones that are more appreciative of the man doing it with them? I would say, uh, I don't think it's a race thing. I think it's just if that woman really loves you, she's going to take care of you. And that's just that and vice, versa, and vice versa. Like, you know, if that woman really loves you and she knows that you've been out working hard all day, uh, you know, she's going to think, oh, damn, my man's been working hard all day. I've been at the house all day. I wonder what he wants to eat. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just experiences that I've had. Like, that's just, it's like saying I love you without actually saying I love you. So I don't really think it's a race thing. It's just like, if a woman sees that her man is a, is a man, you know, like an actual man, like taking care of his business, taking care of his family, you know, is he, may, he might not be the perfect man or whatever, but at the end of the day, he's trying to be the best man that he can be for her, himself, and, his, and, and, and the family that they're trying to create together. I think the woman will do anything for that man. That woman will lie on the on on you know, the level. The woman will lie, you know, against oath for that man. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like women, when they feel like they have a man who's actually like, you know, I feel like women kind of go sour when, uh, like, let's say a man says he he he, he gonna do this, he gonna do that, he gonna be this, he gonna do that, and then they don't actually see the result of that man's thought then it's like, okay, this man's full of shit. Like he, he's not, he's not actually keeping his word. He's not actually, you know, showing me what he said we were going to do. But I feel like when a woman hears a man, okay, this is what we're going to do, baby. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Da, 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 da. And if she's starting to see the actual progress, like I said, a man like that keeps his word about what he's trying to do. You know, I, I feel like the, the trust level and just the submissiveness heightens when a woman feels like she has a man that, he says he's gonna do something and it's going to get done. No, I can definitely agree with you, bro. That's 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 just well said for sure, man. I, um, 
I would say like helping around the house. I would say it's not so much of if a woman is around or not. It's just so much. I would think that's just a part of life. Like people don't understand. Like it's a part of life to have. Well, for me, wise, it's a part of my life to see how I want to clean the environment around me. Because growing up, I didn't have that option. It was just that just wasn't the thing. And obviously, the military then bred it into me. Like cleanliness is just the breeding grounds for just making sure you have a, a clean environment. But even more so, I don't expect a woman to clean my environment for me. You know, it's appreciated. But nevertheless, I expect myself to hold myself to cook clean and do all those things as a measurement of household duties. That's how you keep up a household, you know. And even more so, people who have, like, allowances for their kids. It's like, bro, if you're telling your kid they have chores and stuff like that, you're rewarding them with money. I get all that, but you shouldn't be rewarded to do something that's a necessity to live. So when they get older, do you think they're going to be like, damn, man, I got to do all this shit. And I'm, not, I'm so used to getting paid. It's like, it's like that's something to really think about. What about you, Jabari, though? In a sense, do you feel like helping around the house is, is um, something that you look into doing? Okay, so with me being in the Navy, uh, uh, cleaning, like, like how you say, cleaning is most definitely a thing that's been like, like really buried into me even more, but I've always been a very clean person. Uh, I would say, though, for a relationship-wise, I believe things will work a lot more smoothly, smoothly if, like, uh, the woman did more of those things. Because, like, how you said, uh, how Ty said that, like, uh, you know, a woman really love a man, she, like, hurt these things. Uh, also, with those, uh, with those things, take on his plate, he gives him the time to work on his craft. Or whatever skill he's doing to bring in more income, and it makes it it makes the team itself. Uh, I would say probably I would say it makes the team itself stronger if she if she enjoys those things. But you know, if you search for that in somebody, or you know, you you like if you're scouting, you would you know make that like a known thing. It's something that has to be discussed. Uh, as far as like taking care of the children goes, that that for sure would be a like that's a two handed thing. Like, it's not going to ever just, it should never only be the mother taking care of the children because uh, having a father in the life of a child is very, like, vital. Like, most of our correctional facilities are filled with uh, men, black men specifically, more often than not, uh, because they're, uh, what is it called? I think it's, like, statistically, like, seeing that, like, uh, people who are more prone to, like, create, I mean, you know, not create, but to indulge in crime are usually raised by a single mother. And it makes it makes sense in, in a way. Cause like uh I don't know, the mother's usually like very nurturing in the beginning and like throughout their life, like, oh my baby can never do no wrong. If there's a problem at school, you know, she's more quick to get in the uh, the, the teacher's ass about the kid than the kid. Like she's gonna ask the kid what happened, what did you do, this that, and the third. And yeah, he might, you know, tell, he or she might tell, you know, one part of the story, but they won't tell both sides because you'd rather be seen as a human being in a, in a good light instead of a bad one, instead of taking accountability. And like with the man there plant, present, it, it teaches the child more about accountability uh, and, and teamwork, I would say, when it comes to different things like that, how to work with others. And I, yeah, that, say, that's I got you, got you. I would say too, like, I, I don't know for me, because like, once you're with somebody and y'all start to have a family and stuff like that, cool, it's like, I would want to see my kids, like, everybody's doing something in the household. I want them to have, like, girl, boy, it don't fucking matter. Like, everybody has their roles, but better yet, the main role, everybody's participating in. And I feel like that's a big thing to have. But what about you, Taylor? How do you feel about having, actually, you know, a man who helps around the house and even more, so how does that make you feel? Not having all the options I definitely agree with what everyone said so far. All sides make, you know, really good points. Um, I personally agree. You know, I think chores, you know, helping out in the house goes both ways because if I wasn't there, you know, who would do it? You know what I'm saying? And personally, you know, if, like he said, if you're not a man of the house or if I'm not just head over heels in love with you and you're just, you know, if you're not just the leader of my life, I feel like I can completely submit to, so I don't mind catering to you and taking in that role, you know, without being a wife, per se. You know what I'm saying? This is not even just, this is not even wife mode yet. This is just probably girlfriend mode, you know? Um, it's just, it's just not going to happen, especially if I'm working. 
you know, especially for, you know, because you don't want to, when you get off of work, you don't want to come home and have to cook your own meals and clean and fold your laundry and pick up after yourself. You want your wife to do that. So if she's doing that, if she's going to work and having to come home and do that, how do you think she feels? You know, same thing with kids. You know, I definitely think it goes both ways, but you know, most times or sometimes I know like a big struggle between men and women when it comes between kids, you know, is like the mom will stay at home and the man will go to work um, and he'll make a lot of the money and everything. But then it becomes a thing where he starts to think like the wife is looking at him as an ATM and not appreciating him. And, you know, she's just looking at him as someone who's not really helping out, you know, doing what he can at home because, you know, he's coming home and checking out versus she's at home all day long working, working, taking care of the kids is work. You know, you can't rest, you can't nap, you can't rest, you can't step outside, you know, they might hurt themselves or something, you know, you got to maintain their safety and whatnot. So it's just like, they're having to work 24 hours, you come home, you check out, they're still doing their job. You know what I'm saying? So if that communication isn't being had, if you're not appreciating and taking in your, you know, your fair share of work, it can become, you know, overbearing, it can become a relationship changer. And that is where, you know, then the whole catering to you 24 seven, your children, you know, your future legacy of family and on top of that, like taking care of you, like you're another child that I just had birth to, you know, picking up after you cooking, cleaning, you know, it's just a lot. So I agree with what everyone's saying. It's just like a key component of that to make sure that's actually something we can do is just having that communication and realizing and appreciating how, you know, important discussing these roles are before we step into deep relationships with people um or just relationships in general um and I definitely appreciate that stuff um like personally I've kind of experienced both you know of Mm -hmm. being that girl and then kind of stepping away and not being that girl because it was just I don't know it wasn't giving what it was supposed to give no more and like you said as soon as that shift isn't there it's like you're not really it so why am I going to sit here and be it for you if I haven't even been wifed yet, you know, on top of that. So now it's like, I'm doing more than I should be doing, you know, in a way. Um, even with that, I'm going to start to interrupt you, but even with that, no, I, mean, I, I, I think what I think Steve Harvey said that the best, but even more so, I mean, I mean, with this era nowadays to really, to really elevate your access of what a man has over you, you know, you have to limit what you give to. I mean, because a man, once he sees everything you have to offer and you ain't even put a ring on it and all that stuff, like, cool, it's like, you know, why do I need to put the ring when I got everything you got to offer right now? There's no point in that. Right. Versus like when you're like, hey, you know, if you want me to be here more often or cook up you all like who like that, then you know what you need to do. And you stand your ground in that regard and it's up to that man like, damn, this shit, job. man, this girl, like, hey, it, when I, when he's in his eyes, like, she's worth it. they like, fuck it, now nah, I'm willing to do that because I see what she's worth. Versus if you get all of her too soon, most men, you know, they're not going to be like, why? <laughs> right. But um, nevertheless, what, what, what is your take? Um... So I, I guess like cleaning, cooking, cleaning, all that fun stuff. I do think, I think that whoever is bringing in more into the household economically, the other person should be, you know, doing more of the cleaning and taking on more of the household chores around the house. But the thing is, I will say this, um, yeah, that person that's not bringing in as much or whatever, that's taking on the household chores or whatever, that's fine, do that all the time, whatever. But the person that is also bringing in the economics can clean up here and there. You know what I mean? Can can give a lending hand, can sweep a floor, could wash a dish here and there because sometimes it's just, it's just honestly it's thoughtful. It's just one of those things like give that person a break here and there. You know what I mean? Like I I, you know, I've been doing this or whatever. And sometimes that act of service or whatever can just really be meaningful. Cause like for me, I'm extremely clean for those that know me. Um, I, I'm like quick to like sweet mom, like pick up, like I, I don't, my car is clean. I don't have a cluttered ass car. That's just me. Um, so I like to have control over my space and make sure that my space is clean, but if I'm consistently doing that all the time and I ask you to sweep, like, sweep, you know what I mean? <laughs> if I ask you to clean the bathroom, clean the bathroom. That's not taking a hit at you because I know you'll do it. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I, I think the person that's bringing in the more economics or whatever doesn't have to have that job, but the person that's not, you know. So, uh, I'm not to rub it. I think, so you're trying to say basically, like, 
when when it's up to cleaning and stuff like that, cool. The person who primarily does it shouldn't feel the pressure. Like if I don't do this, it's not going to get done. You shouldn't audit. You shouldn't feel that full pressure. You, know, you like, shouldn't. Babe. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. that other person, like, damn, I'm like, hey, yo, I, I, I'm I'm gonna got something going on. Cool. All right, boo, bad, I got it. I think like, you should be the pressure. Like, damn, if it's gonna get done, it's gonna get done. It's still gonna get done. Yeah, you know, regardless. It, that's what I'm saying. But just be mindful of like just doing it. Don't get lazy and be like, oh, you know, okay, let's don't do it. I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and kick my feet up and you know yeah. not do X, Y, and Z. But I know that um, a lot of women, you know economically men do bring in more money sometimes and a lot of women unfortunately to say they're not quick to like cooking clean which is that fucking behooves me um especially the cooking aspect because i'm like y'all niggas gotta eat every day like we eat that's one thing for sure that we do every single day we eat and drink and you don't know how to cook a basic ass meal like some spaghetti you don't know how to, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And it's really crazy that a lot of women don't do that. But then I also know, unfortunately to say, a lot of their upbringing, they weren't taught how to cook versus like older generation. Because I know that older generation, because my mom, my mom was born in the 60s and her mom was born in the 40s. And my grandma had my mom in the kitchen learning how to cook learning how to clean, learning how to, you know, do certain things. My mom, she was, it was even to a point where my mom was sewing her own clothes, like for school and stuff like that. Like she has sewed like certain like costumes and stuff like that for us growing up. So it's just, you know, I feel like that generation is just, our generation is not um, doing that anymore because it's just a different dynamic, unfortunately to say. But yeah, it just it really does get me when women are like, I don't know how to cook. And it's like, but you're you're having kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you you can't cook, but you but you're having kids like kids. And kids, those are little humans that rely on you. And you gotta make sure you feed them. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah, but that's a whole different topic. Yeah, that is. <laughs> pretty more. So let's switch up. Let's switch up the pace right here, man. Um, it's gonna get a little deep today, you know, since we're on the free flow for all. But I'm curious to know everybody answering, and you know, everybody's welcome to answer if they want to. If not, it's all good too. So for me, the biggest, the biggest thing that I was curious to know, um, well for myself, I can answer first, obviously. You know, what does it actually feel like to have your heart broken? You know, what I'm saying everybody has their own meaning of that, or everybody has their own experience of actually having a heart broken. But what does that actually mean? And um, I would say for me, you know, and it goes back to the first, you know, when I was pure and shit like that, I would say having a heartbroken, it's you, you're in a, you're in a frenzy in your mind of understanding what the fuck did I do wrong right. versus what I did right. I was always focused on the negative, you know, heartbreak makes you go into a negative state of being of like, damn, what did I do wrong? You know, what, what I could have done more, you know what I'm saying? Hey, why didn't I see this coming? You know, and you start to beat yourself up. So like for me, in the sense of having a heartbroken, it was just more so in the state of, wow you know i wasn't worthy enough and something like that cool and then mm -hmm. obviously you know i'm just saying a glance of you know that's a little glance of the things of having a heartbreak but even more so the biggest key that got me out of it i had to redefine what peace was what right. was self-peace you know what does that actually mean to me understand it okay understand it from that point on and it took a while obviously you know when you get through the emotions of like that and that's the biggest impact on a man you know when you get your heart broken the first time Bro, you don't, you get flooded with emotions and all this shit like that. Cool, we weren't really taught or moving such with emotions. So it's, it's unknown territory. So nevertheless, for me, I had to redefine what peace was, you know, what it actually was and established that within me of understanding, okay, peace is, needs to be my own meter. And it needs to be, it needs to be very clear of like self-worth is everything, but better yet, don't allow somebody else to validate your self-worth and don't allow somebody else's actions to really devastate you into the point of like, wow, you know, I ain't worth shit. So that was like the big thing for my heartbreak. That, that was like the biggest thing. And then uh, where you want to go? I guess. Uh-oh, um, here we go. My first heartbreak was like, I guess it was like being in the shower crying and sliding down the damn wall <laughs> type situation. That shit hurt. Like, that shit hurt. Um, but I guess, you know, like Hey Luke was saying, uh, for me, I know that it was one of those well, damn, am I not good enough? Um, having a lot of self-doubt within myself and not knowing if my worth was, you know, good enough. Honestly, that's just where it, where it boils down to. Um, looking back at those situations, because I've, I've had my heart broken a few times, to be honest with you. 
Um, but looking at that first one, that first one hurt differently. But I know, and I know. But looking back at that situation, that particular situation, and other situations, I know that it was a maturity thing on like the other person's end. I know I wasn't in a mature state. I know that you know it's, it's shit just happens. It's it's not right, but shit just happens. And it was just one of those things of, I guess how am I going to pick up the pieces and how am I going to move forward and what am I going to do to um, to just overcome that situation? So um, yeah, that's just what it was. But a lot of it, I look back at it, I look at it like I was young. It happened. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Um, it's honestly no hard feelings. Even my my last relationship in like 2019, 2018 or whatever, it was just one of those things where it's just like, you know, hey, it is what it is. It's all all is forgiven. We were young, fuck it. Mm -hmm. And I just can't, I can't forget who I am as an individual and my worth as a woman. So that's just how I look at that. But that first one I can say it just changed me and helped me grow. Yeah, it's it's the pinnacle point. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ty, bro? Um I'll say uh, my first um, heartbreak, let me think. It was more so like a realization that uh, life is not a fairy tale. Um, that's what it was for me. Because like the way the way that me and this, this, this girl ended, um, his life was you know, back in high school. But like we kept in contact all throughout college though. But it reached a point where it was like we both realized like we're probably never gonna get back together. Like, you know, it was kind of one of those things. It was kind of like the realization of like almost like time wasted, you know, like it was kind of like, damn, like all the different women that like came into my life during this time, but like I couldn't give them all of me because I was still stuck on you like uh, of like just hope like you know think of like just having that fairy tale like you know notebook you know what i'm saying like we yeah. broke up for a yeah. minute but at the end of the day we go end up together in the end yeah. you know what i'm saying that kind of thing and, and it was just kind of the realization of just like no like literally no like like you can literally meet somebody at the right time but it'd be the wrong person or it could be the right person at the wrong time and that shit is real Right. Like for real, like I feel like we all have that one person where like, damn, if, if I would have met this person at this age or something like that, we probably believe that we'd be with that person today. But because we got with certain people when we were young and like just on our journey of just maturing and trying to find ourselves and growing and they were on their same thing, it just didn't work out. But like, um, I feel like we all kind of got those things that kind of linger in the back of our heads sometimes. Not necessarily bothers us, but like we all got memories. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we all just sit down and just like, damn, like I remember when, like, you know what I'm saying? And just be able to just feel that moment. So I feel like my first heartbreak was just kind of like a realization of like, damn, like life is not a fairy tale. Like at the end of the day, like, yeah, you can marry somebody and you love them and all that kind of stuff. And that's great. But like, it really could have, it really is a possibility on both parties, on both sides that there were people in their life that they were in love with and it just didn't work out simply because of just the times, you know, and you just met this person at the right time when you guys were both mature enough to actually have a relationship and actually love each other properly. So you guys worked out, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that, that's what it was for me, if you know what I'm, if you know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's good. Caleb, if you would have met me a few years ago, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. I would have got in, got out. Like, yeah. That's just what it would have been because the maturity level was just not there. And then also, too, when he was at, like, for, for, what you, well, yeah, what where, you was at, where you was at I've in life. Been, I've always been a relationship man. Yeah, whatever. I've always been, I'm here. No. But nevertheless, before Anyways. we get into that. Ty, what, what did you, how did you get out of that? Like, what was the main thing that you did to get through that for yourself? It was, it, it's crazy because like, it kind of just happened. Like, because it was like a lingering thing, you know, that happened and stuff, it, uh, 
it was kind of just like more like a realization like all right like this is done like there's no point of like holding on to this fairy tale no more like it's time to move on like once time has passed and like you you haven't been in contact with somebody or like the contact has been on and off you know what I'm saying like naturally those feelings and you time heals all you know it's so cliche but that's fact like over time you guys just realize like it is what it is like we still have love for each other we could check in on each other. Hey, how you doing? How's your mom? How's your brother? You know, everything like that. But like, we just know like, yeah, it's never going to be like that. You know, so it was kind of like that for me. And that was when I got to Nebraska. So like I said, like when it happened for me, I was like, damn, like all the women that I met in college where I was like, I could have, like, they really could have been like a good woman for me. But like, I just couldn't give them all of me because I was still stuck on her. And we wasn't even at the same college, like just different kind of things, but like just that kind of connection um, kind of thing. And then obviously meeting somebody new, which obviously ended up being my next girlfriend, that helps, you know, falling in love with somebody else. Obviously that helps, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. I appreciate you. But to answer the actual question that I think you really wanted, like the real answer for, when I got my heart broke the second time, well, how I got through that was just staying busy. Which yeah. is basically yeah. trying to just like everything that, I, that uh, I, couldn't, I didn't know how to do, I just figured out how to do. It was just that, like watching YouTube videos on how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, how to do that, and just staying busy all the time. And then eventually, with time, <laughs> you know, it got easier and easier. But yeah. Got you, bro. Well, I appreciate you expressing. Sorry. I appreciate you expressing your truth, brother. You didn't have to, but you did, man. So what about you, Taylor? What was what is what was it like to actually get your heart broken and even more so how you navigated out of that or through that? Skip. No, no, no. Oh, you next, bro. You next, bro. Now nah, he got skills. <laughs> well, Wait. Go, go ahead, bro. Go ahead and say it. You go ahead. You're ready to go. Go ahead. Yeah. I see you got to open it. Uh, I was, I was, I was plotting this whole. You're breaking up while you you're sitting there service, plotting. Brother. Oh my god! They got bad service. I can't wait to hear. Right, yeah, you know his story, his his story wild as shit. shit. Bro, brother, he got bad service. Oh Taylor, my Taylor, god. Taylor, Taylor, just go ahead. Taylor. For now. I tried to give him an opportunity, y'all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I honestly um, agree with the last two. You know, it was really just like that realization, like everything isn't always what it seems. You know. Um, you can give your all to someone and it can still not be enough. Or you can just not be the right person at the right time. And you have to understand that sometimes. And it kind of also made me realize like the, how important that the brighter side is. You can really understand why you went through what you went through and utilize it. So it's not, so it's not something that holds you back. It's something that you can still utilize and see that it it still equipped you for better, you know? Um, and yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of just saying what I want to say too, so. Go ahead, go <laughs> That's all. I have a question after this is all said and done. Wait, go ahead. wait, 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 wait. Uh, just to say, what, uh, piggyback off what Taylor said that really resonated with me, she said, you can give your all to someone and it can still not be enough. Right. That's right. basically the gist of like, I think coming over, overcoming a heartbreak or just anything in life. Like, that's how I think about like, like just business and aspirations, like, or just anything like, you know, like I came to the realization where, damn, I gave my all to this game and it still wasn't enough. Like you could give your all to something and it still cannot be enough, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't give your all. And I feel like when we get our heart broke, the next person, they fall victim to us not giving our all. And I feel like the essence of life, kind of like the essence of, you know, like being a, a, you know, I guess a Christian or someone that believes in God and that kind of thing mm -hmm. is just ever is just endless love. Like you can give all of this love and they might not appreciate it, but that's OK. You know what I'm saying? Like you can give your all to this craft and you might be overlooked, but that's OK. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't mean that you should stop giving your all. And I just wanted to say that because that really resonated with me. I'm so glad that you said that the next person will fall victim to, you know what I mean, to that. Because that that's so true. Like, that is so true. Because, um, and 
women do this, but men do this also too, if it's a bad breakup, but you know, women don't get a, like a man's all sometimes. And I can't, I can't speak for men, but like women don't get a, a man's all because that last ex did X, Y, and Z. And men start to preserve and protect, you know what I mean? And, and sometimes that's not fair because the fact of the matter is you might be dealing with a really good individual, you know, me- male or female. So, but Jabari. Oh, before he go. Oh, wait, wait. And even, Cause Taylor wouldn't finish, but even to tap into that more um, um, time, bro, <laughs> wait. it's to really understand that you can give your all, but that's not what that person asked for, or that's not the essence of what they needed to feel love. Right. Or to hear love and nor- be nourished by love. This is like the love language. Like, yo, my, I'm giving my all in physical touch and acts of service and everything like that. But your all to see and to receive is 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 quality time and and act and gifts and shit like that. And that's not why I maximize that. So my all is just not a fit for you. But we, we tend to overlook certain things and feel like we can change somebody or we can contribute to them in that way. And hopefully that's enough. So it, yeah, that's that's some deep shit, bro. That's definitely some deep shit. Nevertheless, Taylor, I know you can keep going. You can keep going. I know you want to. Yeah, I was to say, like, y'all really talking right now. Like, sheesh, <laughs> the gems. Um, I think it's also like heartbreak can also be like that initial disappointment that realize when you realize when you have that moment, that aha moment, almost of like, damn, you know, like this is what it is now. This is what was behind the curtain. You know, mm-hmm. or this is now a problem that is substantially a core thing that affects our relationship to me that I wasn't aware of until now. You know, that mm-hmm. I think can really be kind of like what he was saying. You know, it's like like anything in life, like when you're pursuing something, you have that initial disappointment or, you know, you're reaching an opportunity and, you know, you don't, it doesn't necessarily fall through. It just kind of redirects you down a different path. You utilize that and it guides you down a different direction. You take it along the way or, you know, it affects the next person or, you know, whatever the case might be. But I think it's also just like that initial disappointment of realizing like this is something that you now have to consider and decide like, is this something you're going to work through? or you that you see you can work through or is it something that's definitely going to be like that last straw that's going to lead down that path of non-existent relationship you know god damn okay all right all right i i can definitely say um i agree to a lot of those things it's just definitely something to tap into i know when you get in a heartbreak you get you spend a lot of time yourself mentally and emotionally we well, go ahead, Jabari, man. Bust it loose, brother. On you, brother. On you. Come on, Jabari. Let me sit down in my wine. Hold on. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, first song I got my heart broke. Mm, I'll probably, I'll probably say. Oh, I'll probably an A school. I had to sit. Well, hold on. Let me think back. All right, so I was at high school, right? Actually, I was at high school. I was, uh, I, I was essentially, I was essentially the, the side man, the side boy. I was the side guy. And and basically, what what happened was, huh? You know, you're the side guy. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. I played my <laughs> ball to a T. <laughs> played it strong. Hey, played it strong. I gave her that when she wanted. <laughs> when she needs it, when she fainted for it, I, hate I ain't asking her for nothing best. He, he always came to clutch. I hear you. Oh my! But what what ended up happening? What ended up happening was though was basically like one day she wanted to talk to me after school or whatever, and I'm like oh shit, I should be fucking tired. But uh, she basically wanted to talk to me after school, and uh, it was it was at a place where I felt most at home on the track, and uh, she she basically told me that. You know, she loved God more than she loved me. And I was just like, what love do you and, and, like, I just, you know, I ain't speak to her. I ain't say nothing. I just turned my back to her and walked off. Because I ain't know what the fuck was going on. I don't even know where she got that shit from. Maybe she was just too caught up in her own games and her own feelings. And she got me discombobulated, confused. Because now I'm like, damn, she loved me. But she don't love me like she loved him. Shit. But, uh, anyways... So when all this shit went down, right, I went home. I just sat on the couch. I pondered the moment, replayed it, 
a few times, and then I was like, hmm, I'll... Uh, I'm not Uber, I'm a... I mean, uh, the thing. Uh, the, 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 wait, what's your name? Brenda. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put you, I got you, I got you, here you go, here you go. All right. All right. Thank you. Good man, take care. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Ooh, wait, you can't make this shit up. Hey, look, we we good, we good. Hey, be easy, Brenda. Ooh. All right, man, y'all be good. All right, so like I was saying, um, why you do Brenda like that? First off, I she, okay. Somebody just started walking to your car, right? And it's the order say like, okay, hand hand it to me, but you don't know who what Brenda looked like. They don't give you a picture of nothing. So I was like, hold on, hold on. What's your name? And that's that when she talked. Yeah, anyways. You um, weren't playing so over that big guy unless we knew. <laughs> you said what? I said you weren't going to hand over that McDonald's unless you knew that was Brenda. Oh, big facts. Ain't going to take no points off what I got going. <laughs> you know, you want some free food. But also, hey, too, hey, hey, people are like, is your name Sean? I'm like, is your name Sean? Is your name Jasmine? Like, is your, I, I say a, a fake name that's not even on the thing to see how they respond. But anyways, go I'll ahead, Jabari. I want to hear all of this. Okay, okay. So I went home, I did the mom, whatever. And then, like, later in night, or whatever, I first my mom came. My mom was at the door. I mean, she was like, doing something in the mirror. And then she was like, hey, Ty, your friend here. And I was like, I ain't no national company. Ain't nobody supposed to be coming over here this time of night. And then she was like, and then I, I went to the door, and there she was, standing in the threshold, looking at me. I'm looking at her. I want to tell her the bitch kick rocks. But my mama right there. So I was like, okay, okay. What what, what is it that you want? She was like, oh, I got this school project. And, and, you know, I want you to, you know, come with me to Walmart so I can pick up the things I need and, you know, maybe help me with it. And she ain't really need no help. She was in like AP classes and shit. Real bright woman, for 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 the most part, intellectually and shit. So I was like, okay, cool. So I I complied. I got in the car. We went to Walmart. We looking in the crayon section, and then she pulled me right back into her web. She sneaky. She just she just she did something to me in that Walmart. Then next thing I know, we back at the house, making out on the floor. My brother sitting in the couch eating an apple. Like damn. Got his ass. He went to the crayon section. I'm stuck on that. <laughs> like, <crayon section. laughs> so, right. so, so then I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll go, I'll go along with what, what, what Ty said. Ty, then he went to the second time. It's only happened to me three times in life. The second time I was in A school, I was fucking with a chick. She basically called, she was older, she was like 10 years older. And I think we were going on a second date that she really wanted to go on, whatever. But she called a rain check. So, you know, I cleared her ass. I was like, nah, you don't cancel, baby. So I just, I let her go. I let her slide. I was like, I'm good. So she started fucking with one of my roommates or whatever. Because she knew, she knew the shit would get to me. That's the crazy part. If I was, like, I was fucking with different chicks, but, like, they from different, like, they do different rates. We don't go to school together. They they don't live in your same, like, they don't live in your same bar. This she she went all the way in. She she went for the dude that was in the same mod as me, go to class with me. They share coffee and shit. And I'm like, damn, this bitch really trying to hurt me. And he did. Yeah, I kept it. I kept it. Huh? And he did it though. He did it with her. Oh yeah, for sure. You can't you can't be mad at the dude in a situation like that. He just trying to get some cat. Like I mean, it is what it is. You can't be like, mad. I ain't at cool, you. buddy. With y'all, wow. with y'all homies. Hell no. Nah. All right, then that mind. Yeah, fuck. We just, we, just, we, just, we just lived in the same mod. We just lived in the same mod. Okay, okay. So that shit happened, whatever. I ended up seeing her future uh, out here in San Diego because, you know, she recently got stationed out here. I started fucking with her again, kind of. We went on a date or whatever. <laughs> we got her apartment or whatever, about to get it in. And then she was like, this can't happen. She was like, oh, next time it's going down. But then she was like, this can't never happen again. You just trying to you just trying to get a notch into your belt again or some shit. I was like, oh, man. You tripping. But nonetheless, the, the, the third time, Caleb know, I took a chick out of a bad situation with her family and shit and, and like, moved into the spot, you know, helped her out, put her on game. And like like y'all said, you know, even though you try to do the most with somebody, sometimes it's never enough. Uh, they're not in the right time and space to, like, be deserving of what you're doing. 
So, I don't know. It does make you a little bit cold to the outside world. Because I did go on a tear. Like, I was smashing left and right. <laughs> but then I came to realize they just smashing chicks left and right. And it's kind of a waste of time. So, I really got on my business shit. And, I, you know, I started a notary company. I only got my notary in the state of California, of course, to get the notary company going. And, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I, I used that, that energy, that anger to motivate me to do better. You know, my teeth was fucked up. Now I got, you know, $6,500 in my mouth, you know, just making myself better. Like, like life goes on. I mean, at the end of the day, usually a chick can only date up. She won't date down. So, like, you know what I mean? The possibility of her finding somebody better, it's possible. But someday I'm gonna be a millionaire. She gonna have three kids and, a, and three yeah. dead be both dead be dead. Shit, I'm out here getting to it. You see me out here hustling. You see me living this shit. All right, crazy. All right, all right. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I, I think everybody was just playing from that shit, bro. What what, what was your question, Zena? How does that say what? I think everybody's just saying from that, bro. But go ahead, Zena. How does everybody feel about? Cheating or being cheated on. Let's start with hold on, Brian. Brian gotta go. Brian gotta go. And well, Brian gonna, missed that part. He well, got, I was gonna ask him a question. You want you want you gonna stay on that? No, that fuck it. I was like, let's move on to the next one. We're about to spice it up. Go ahead. What you said? I was saying, how does everybody feel about cheating or being cheated on? You can go ahead, Jabari. Oh, I'll have to go ahead. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Um I mean, if I was ever cheated on, I would never have known, shit. How would I feel if a woman did cheat on me? I do believe it hurts a lot worse for a woman to cheat on a man and a man to cheat on a woman because the dude just trying to get a nut, essentially. Not saying there's some shit I'm out here doing. I mean, I've done it before, but, you know, nonetheless, uh, she actually has to like, respect, and care about the dude or, you know, have feelings for a man that she's not becoming involved with or feel that, you know, you're not you're not on that upper level anymore. You're not in, you're not entertaining her like you used to. You become you become less than what she once found. You, she doesn't feel you're as valuable anymore. As for with a guy, uh, you know, I can still love my girl and go fuck another chick. That's not like it's not like a, as a connecting thing. Like it's I don't believe it registers the same for men and women. But nah, I mean shit. If that's what she wanna do, go do it. You're just not gonna be it. I ain't gonna feel like I ain't gonna feel like I ain't I don't know because I'm not deep in with nobody right now. If I was become deep in, you have to be cold in the moment and, you know, deal with your own feelings accordingly to how you're going to deal with it. I don't say recklessly go out and smash every female you see to get over that one chick, but really realize who you is and, you know, what you can become and really tap into that energy. Use that anger as fuel. And use it and get down on yourself and start feeling like, you know, you're not that guy. Because every day you wake up, you should feel like you that nigga. Every fucking day. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Oh, my God, All right, right? <laughs> Every fucking day. Oh, my God. I would say um, I would say for me, I'm um, being cheated on or would you, would you say cheating or are you getting cheated cheating on? Cheating or cheating on. Um, Well, I've done it both. But um, I, I, I would say. You've been cheated on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Over time. over time, I didn't know at the time. But nevertheless, all right, I'm going to start with cheating first. I mean, me cheating first, obviously, I don't know, as of being a man, instinctually, yeah, it's like I'm just attracted to him. I can love this woman, but I can be like, damn, yo, I just want to get one in you because you're just attracted to me physically. But nevertheless, you get to a point of age that you can overcome yourself body-wise without question, but a lot of that stuff does need to happen to get out your system. But nevertheless, me doing it, I wasn't thinking of her at that moment. I was just thinking of just getting what I got to get and keep it moving. So it was never really nothing like really like vindictive. Uh, it was nothing really truly to hurt her or anything like that. It was just something that wasn't spoken upon until later on when I felt deemed that my conscience is not clear. I had to get it off my chest. And even more, something that's old to me was new to her. And then by cheating on her, it caused a, a trending pain of that. But nevertheless, me getting cheated on, I didn't know at the time, obviously, but you can have a glance. A, a, a man can have more of a glance of knowing. We don't truly accept it, but nevertheless, you got to define what cheating is. Um, I would say for me, it's like more so you doing some shit. You could have told me before and stuff like that. Like I'm at the age of nowadays. I'm like, bro, if you want to do some shit with somebody else, just to communicate it to me. But nevertheless, it is, this is life. 
somebody who's loyal to me, a woman who's loyal to me truly, they get more access to me than the ones who aren't. That's just how, that's just what it is in the world of how I'm trying to live. And I, that's vice versa. Like if I do some shit and if you want to limit your access to me, I, I get that too. I respect that. That's just, that's just the essence of like, nobody belongs to nobody, but better yet. What makes that essence not go away and like who when you communicate thoroughly way before, you know what I'm saying? And then it, it comes more clear and easier. So that's just my take on that. I have, okay. So, cause I've heard this cause I've been cheated on and I've cheated. Like that's just what it is. And when I, I know when I got cheated on or whatever, I wasn't the nicest to my ex. But the thing was, is that I was dealing with like people that passed away, right? So men, this is for y'all, because y'all say like y'all could just cheat and then still love on your girl and X, Y, and Z. But if your girl is like going through something or she's just kind of being a bitch to you or being mean to you or whatever, does that give you the right to cheat? Like, has that given you incentive to cheat on somebody for them being like a certain way towards you? I would say that's that's based upon like why am I your punching bag if you're going through some shit? Mm. It's like unfortunate to say, but you literally experience somebody in all seasons. Like mm -hmm. literally, like they're going through some shit. You're their punching bag. Unfortunately, you have to take all those blows. Or y'all just had a bad argument or just a bad disagreement out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, but, and then you just go cheat afterwards. Because some of those times when you're throwing blows and stuff like that, cool. That's you you expressing that cool is you navigating with yourself out loud. And that out loud, I'm unfortunately the byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. that's unfortunate time but for me nevertheless like being being that it's not to say an excuse it's more so that man needs to express to her what it's doing to her and she needs to navigate accordingly now if she chooses to continue on then at that point you can't blame the man for doing whatever he does to navigate accordingly mm -hmm. but to clear that conscience for him he needs to verbalize that throughout that whole process mm -hmm. and then you have to live with knowing what you did from start to finish yeah that's just my take on it yeah. what about you ty Like, there, bro? Um, yeah, yeah. On being cheated and and, and, and cheated on and cheating. Oh, what well, um, well, that one? This is the, the question you just asked. Do men oh, cheat out of spite? Do men cheat out of spite? Yeah. Um per personally, I don't. I've always cheated just because I mean I'm gonna just keep it real. And this is just some real that's just what it is for men, like. I've always cheated just out of like, yeah, man, I need something new. Like, I just need to feel something new. You know, it ain't that I don't love you. It's just that, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just, yeah, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just needed something, something new, you know, and this girl just so happened to be taking a liking to me. And she just so happened to be, you know, really, uh, liking me and like not giving a fuck that I got a relationship so fuck it I'm gonna just take this opportunity right now you know just to have a little bit of fun mm -hmm. and then yeah that's what it was but I've never like a girl never like cheated on me and then or like this somewhere we got an argument I was like all right I'm about to go cheat like no nah, <laughs> like, I've never did that I've never yeah. did that but um so I don't know I feel like most guys don't do that. I feel like it's more the opposite way around honestly like I feel like more girls cheat or just really do anything out of spite more than more than men do. But uh, as far as being cheated and cheated on, I feel like everybody, and I really mean it too. Like I don't, I don't, I don't believe people that say they've never cheated. Like everybody cheats. Everybody is going to get cheated on. Um, I just feel like it's just it just depends on like the circumstances of like just relationships and stuff like I don't know man like I just feel like <clears throat> okay if you cheating and you just keep on cheating and all of this shit and you lying about it and all of this stuff okay like all right bet like y'all probably shouldn't be together y'all should be broken up or whatever but if y'all got a family together you know what I'm saying like y'all got two kids and y'all in y'all 40s and shit and one of you just so happened to cheat one night. Is that really, like, is that really enough to, like, really just break down the whole family? I don't know, in my opinion, you know? I, I'm not I'm, I'm not married, obviously. I'm not, I don't have kids with this person, so I really don't know. But I just think of kind of things like that, like, damn, if I, if I had a kid with this woman, we've been married for 10 years, and then she cheats on me, am I just going to divorce her? And, and just tell the kids, oh, I divorced your mom because 
she cheated like you know what I'm saying like one night I don't know like is it really is it really my ego or is it like no it's like I don't know I just go back and forth of like is this something is this an ego thing or is this really something that like no like we should really just shut down this establishment I think of things like that I think that people that are in like long-term relationships or whatever like that have the like that have their life established with one another and really like are pouring into each other and have kids and stuff like that together I feel like they some some people really do actually weigh their options and see if this is worth breaking up their family and everything like that like I really do think that because the older I got the more bullshit I found out about my family like right. for sure right. and I thought, you know, throughout my life or whatever, I thought my mom and my dad were just the perfect, happy, go lucky, white picket fence fucking couple. And come to find out, them niggas was doing some crazy shit. Like, that's just what it was. But the thing was, at the end of the day, they were like, you know, what matters most? These kids, our marriage, our love, our foundation. Why do we get here? Yeah, we fucked up. Yeah, we're not getting along or whatever the case may be. But our family is more important than all of these outside entities. I would say with oh. that though, um, honestly, like if somebody cheated 10, 10 years down the road, you know, you can work past and get through it. You know, you know, you know, you don't see her the same if you really never, that never happened to you before, first off. But even more so, I mean, y'all probably work through it until they're 18. Then they can, not to say shut it down, but this man, so y'all two together, then it is what it is. But nevertheless, I mean, yeah, obviously none of us married here to that point, but I would say communication can eradicate anything. Yeah. That's but just- I'll say this. If I were to get cheated on now, yeah, we're done, like, for sure. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, if if, if we haven't reached a point of, of marriage yet, like, if I haven't even proposed to you yet and you cheat on me, we're done. Like, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to fuck. That doesn't mean I don't love you no more. That doesn't mean I ain't even going to have sex with you no more. It just means that I'm single now, you dig? And if you want to get me back, then you're going to have to really jump through some hoops or whatever to really same, show me that I'm what you want. Say again? Does that same rule apply for you? Yeah. You know, I would expect to. I feel like anybody that gets cheated on or if you've been shown that, okay, this person is not appreciated you or this is not obviously the person that, you, that, you know, they, they don't want you or, or they decided something else. It's like, okay, like, why should I still continue with you? Like, I'm going to get you cheated on me. So, okay, I'm going to give you this time to mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. your thing. Like, if, if, am I really what you want to be? It is what it is. It's really no hard feelings. But kind of like what Jabari was saying, I wouldn't really know if I really got uh, cheated on or not uh, unless I was, like, just heard through, like, word of mouth or whatever. It's not like, I've never been the one to, like, go through someone's phone while they sleep. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, yeah. like I yeah. said I, I, I think I said this before on here. My mom always used to say, like, when you with somebody, it doesn't matter if you're looking over their phone, you got their password, you know, their location. It doesn't matter. They're going to do what they're going to do regardless. Like, so if that's what they're going to do, why stress yourself? Right. Why even put energy into that kind of stuff? It was done in the dark is going to come to the light. Like, so, you know, just, just, just keep being you, keep being the best you that you can be in the relationship. And, you know, whatever, whatever will be, will be. Right. For sure. Uh, I can definitely appreciate that. Brian, what about you, brother? What about you, brother? What's the actual question? Um, How do you feel about cheating and being cheated on? And do men cheat out of spite? Uh, I don't think men cheat out of spite. I mean, every time I cheated, it's because, you know, I think I'll just, I wouldn't say bored, but I'm entertaining multiple women. So I'm thinking I need to please these multiple women so while in a relationship but my relationship was kind of private back to that other conversation we had the private versus public so females didn't think I even had a girlfriend so I'm living the single life while being in a relationship so that's why I always cheated mm-hmm. and I brought all that into my new relationship and I understand that that was always well I always figured it was wrong but you know how I go men don't really be caring about nothing so just kept that going but the first, I guess, couple of times I did start cheating in the beginning of my relationship, something told me that wasn't right. And I guess the more you do it, you eventually be like, well, this, this is the way of life. This is how it's supposed to go, you know? So I guess what, like, 
on movies like murders and stuff they say they say once you kill multiple people you just get over it and then you can just keep on doing it so i guess it was something like that that was in me but i'm a i am do not really i'm i'm all against cheating the whole time but but as far as a woman cheating on me i'm just like the rest of the guys i don't know if any girl ever cheated on me because i just didn't know to care about it because i'm always doing my own thing off in my own head and doing you know, not paying no mind to that situation. What about you, Tate T Dubs? What about you, T Dubs? Um, so what's the questions? Um, how do you feel about cheating and getting cheated on? And do you feel like men and or women cheat out spite? Okay, so I feel like cheating only happens if, you know, like y'all are saying, kind of, I kind of agree with what everyone said so far. Um, it kind of only happens if I feel like you personally as a partner aren't meeting the other partner's standards. Like you're not necessarily communing their same love language. You know, y'all just aren't on the same page. Or, you know, it's just more of, you know, not necessarily, not necessarily like a, like you can't work through it. It's just, maybe it's more of a chore. You know, I feel like when you start to be, when you start to add more distress to the relationship than necessary, I think that's when you can create that tear in a relationship that could cause, you know, a partner to necessarily start to stray away. Um, but like you, like you guys say, I don't necessarily think men cheat out of spite. I, I have been cheated on before. Um, and I honestly don't even know why to this day. So it could be out of spite. It could not, you know, men are men. Mm -hmm. Um, but it it did make me feel like I had that I started to have that self doubt, like Zena was saying earlier. You know, it made me feel like where did I go wrong? You know, like what could I have done differently? But then it it, it also becomes a battle because as a woman, you know, naturally we are caring, we are nurturers. You know, we give love. That's what we want to do. Yeah. So sometimes it's kind of hard to separate when you're not doing enough or when you are doing enough or when you can do enough or when you cannot do enough because if you don't have a man that's making you feel secure in doing that like you know the future is with him and he's gonna lead you and not make you regret that you know uh, you know at least with shit that's just bs like y'all should be working together through you know i feel like it should be no problem but if you are doing that then then you know i feel like that's what becomes that confusion that okay, now I need to look at what I'm doing because I'm not tied down to you, you know? And I still want to be able to respect who I am if that's already the route the relationship is going in, you know? If it's already having that weight that is tearing us apart and making us even consider, you know, looking at other people. So, I mean, that's that's all I can really say about it. Um yeah, I just feel like I feel like it only happens when, like you said, if, if you either care about someone, you either love them, want to be with them, or you just somewhere in the relationship, both parties, because it's never really one party's fault. You know, there's always two sides to one story. Mm -hmm. um, I think both parties somewhere in there went wrong and there was just no sort of communication. There was no sort of we care about the relationship more than ourselves individually you know our desires our wants um but I understand like where everybody else is coming from you know so that's yeah. just how I feel gotcha gotcha